Come on. Um, what, what else? Who else has something to add to this kind of question? Um, if you're mine. So like this morning someone asked me, you know, did you apply to X? And I was like, no, because I'm in this weird middle ground where as a social entrepreneur, there's all these like $5,000, $1,000, $2,000 programs. And then it jumps to like these larger programs that I'm not qualified yet as a social entrepreneur. So I'm in this weird middle where I'm, you know, I'm struggling to figure out where do I go to get support? And I think that's what we need to start looking at is like, where are these gaps? Where are women falling through? Because that's why we're, we can't get to that level because I can keep just applying to Five thousand and one thousand dollars at a time. So I think we need to look at that overall system. Well, and I'll build on that because that's exactly our work. <laughs> you know, the Center for Social Innovation is all about that social entrepreneur, and um, you know, just a couple of things on that. Uh, the not-for-profit and charitable sector is not seen as a vibrant part of this enterprise field, and that's just wrong. The nonprofit and charitable sector represents 2 million people across the yes. country and 8.7 percent of the gross yes. domestic product, mm -hmm. and we care. And we are led by women. Do you want to know where women are? They're running nonprofits and charitable and social businesses. Right? <laughs> so really importantly, uh, we just recently did a demographic survey of our members. And it was a shock for me to discover that 60% of our founders are women. 60% of our founders are in the social space. That's, you know, compared to any other regional innovation center anywhere, any accelerator across the country. We've got the women in our space. Why? Because they are building enterprises that are focused on caring, whether that's for profit or non profit. But here we have also at the federal level, and I invite the ministers to take a deep look at what the recommendations of the Social Innovation Social Finance Co Creation Committee came out with. Because here we are, and we have now an incredibly exciting moment where we've got I said coming together with the status of women, coming together with the recommendations from ESDC, and an opportunity to start breaking down the barriers between the for profit and nonprofit sector, leveling the playing field so that we on the nonprofit social enterprise side can have our enterprises evaluated right beside yours. Any for profit or non profit, please evaluate us on our merit. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have been nominated for the RBC Women of the a Year Award, the Women Entrepreneur of the Year, for 10 years running, and I've been excluded from that award program for 10 years because apparently non profits can't be trailblazers. <laughs> apparently, we're ineligible simply because of the legal framework that we've adopted. So those of us who are making more sacrifices that are putting profit as second are disqualified from IRAP. We're disqualified from shred credits. Apparently, we're not innovative enough. So this is a really important opportunity. And it's going to take some seismic changes, starting with the CRA, so that we can actually build a truly level playing field between the nonprofit and the for-profit. And then what we need to do is open up the funding programs and the support programs to make sure that folks like you and all of the over 1,000 social enterprises that exist at CSI, which are 60% women-led, have access to the supports to help them grow. $1,000 is pathetic. Like, let's get on with it. And what is to suggest that our desired impact, the way that we want to actually build a caring Canada, is in some way inferior to any for-profit enterprise. We create more jobs. We create more caring. Oh.